This video is going to be a quick overview of my door plugin as well as how to use it and the features that it has. So for starters, let's go ahead and go over what all it offers. So my goal for this plugin was to pretty much make it a one-stop door system. So it's very simple to configure it whichever way you want to have it be controlled however you want without having to really roll your own code and simply just check a couple boxes, set whatever information you want, and be done with it. So first off, we have a door here. Now it's set to use a door lock, so that means we can unlock and lock the door. We're starting with the door locked. We are not using animation to drive this door. Instead, we're driving this door opening and closing via code. And because we're using the door lock system, we are not going to make the door physics-based. And we want the door to rotate away from the player, so the opposite direction of the player. And we want to disable the door until it's fully rotated, so we cannot spam open and close the door. And the next door we have, we want it to, there's literally just nothing here, it's just the default values. We can even toggle that off. Actually, that is the default. And the only thing it's going to do is it's simply going to open clockwise via code. So that way there's just, or open counterclockwise, sorry, via code. So that way there's always something default going on with the door. The next one, we are just disabling the door until it's fully rotated. I haven't actually gone through and set much of these up. I meant to have this set to use the animation. So we're going to be using animations for this door to control it. And as you can see here, Whenever we set it to use animation, certain features get disabled. So currently we're driving it, driving it by code. So we have access to the code. So we can control the door rotation speed, the rotation angle, and whether or not we want the door to open linearly or in kind of a more of a curve. So open link quickly. And then as it gets closer to the end, it slows itself down. When we set it to use the animation, all this kind of stuff gets disabled. However, we still have the options to open the door away from the player or open the door clockwise or counterclockwise and that kind of stuff. So right now, this will open the door counterclockwise. And using, setting it to use animation also enables us to set our animations. So there's an animation for opening clockwise and counterclockwise and closing clockwise and counterclockwise. Now you can set this up to where you only have to use two, just figure out which direction you want it to rotate and it should take care of it for you. Next up, we have a physics-based door. So we just simply toggle make door physics-based and everything gets handled for you that way. If you want to edit how it gets handled, you can just make some changes to the physics constraint here. So let's go ahead and just do a quick example. And all of this stuff, by the way, is replicated across the network. So you just plop the door down and it's ready to go in multiplayer. So let's begin. Here's our first door. I press E to try to unlock it. Nothing happens. I press T. These are just my default binds for the example. It unlocks the door, so now I can open it. And wait till it's fully open, then I can close it. And it's opening away from the player. So you can see the settings. On the left hand side, whoops. Right here. So we're set to use the door lock by default, and it's starting with it locked, so we unlock it to rotate again away from the player and I'm spamming E right now and it will only alter get altered when the door is fully opened or fully closed. Next up we have this door here it's just the default so it's pretty much just going to open counterclockwise like so. However you can still control it mid rotation that kind of stuff. That's just the default setup for it. Next up we have our use animation and when you're using animations, I would recommend, unless you're setting up some sort of timeline or something like that, which will be implemented in the future, so you can use that as well, I recommend you have Disable Door Until Fully Rotated Enabled. So that'll prevent your animations from snapping. So when I open it, it's playing an animation. It is not driven by code. So now I can set this. Even though it's using animations, I can just make it open the opposite direction, like so. So it'll come in from this side, it'll open that direction. Or I can just make it open away from the player. Like so. 
and all of these features work regardless of whether or not you're using animations so assuming you have them all set up like shown in here or if you're doing it via code so next up is our physics door so just walk into the door it opens and it's controlled and handled via physics so i do need to give this door a little bit more weight but you can set the weight however just whatever really works for you so for example the weight on this door i don't even know where the weight actually is off the top of my head i'm not too concerned about it but anyways like i said you can increase the weight and it'll make the door a little more lively so you run into it and it slows your player's movement down and that kind of stuff more aggressively so let's begin making our own door so i'm just going to go ahead and copy this door frame right here and let's drag out from our interactable door content folder let's drag out a door blueprint let's reset it back to zero and let's just bring it up and move it somewhat close to the door frame by default, the only thing that we're going to see in here is our physics yeah, physics constraint. Now, in order to set it up how we want, we can either set up, well, set it up with a static mesh or a skeletal mesh. So if you don't have animations, I would recommend you just use the static mesh. If you do, go ahead and use your skeletal mesh and just plug in your animations however you want. In my case, I just, let's say I don't have animations, so I'm just going to use the uh, static mesh. So I'm just going to grab the door that I want. So this is the one that's included in the project for testing. And here I have it. Let's just position it roughly in the doorway. I didn't mean to have the uh, rotation snapping set to one. So this is going to be a little bit of fine tuning to make it look and line up semi-decent. And I'd say that's pretty close. I'm happy enough with it. Next up, what I want to do is, I want this to just be a simple door. I just want it to open away from the player and everything else be the same. So I just toggle open door away from player, hit play. Let's run down to the door on the end here. Press E. As you can see, it's opening and closing away from the player, like so. Now the only thing is we have it set to open and close where we can uh, just kind of control it mid-rotation. Let's say I want to change that. I want to make it so the door can either fully open and then fully close, uh, but I don't want it to be able to be controlled mid-rotation. So I'm just going to check disable door until fully rotated. Run back down, open the door, I'm spamming E, nothing happens until the door fully closes like so. So now let's say I want to make some changes. Let me just bring my uh, spawn a little bit closer. But now what I can do is go down to our code controlled tab. So let's say we're currently only rotating 90 degrees. Let's say I want this to swing open wider than just a right angle. So I'm going to bump this up to 120 degrees and I want it to be a constant rotation as it's rotating. So I'm going to check rotate door linear. Hit play, open the door. As you can see, it ro rotates 120 degrees and 120 degrees back, but that's a little slow for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the rotation speed from three to six. Let's just double it. Now I rotate it. And that's a good bit better. Maybe just a little faster. Let's bump this up to 10. Make it pretty quick. And there we go. We now have the door that I want set up. So now I want to make it so that the player has to lock and unlock it. So let's cover that. So we just select B, use door lock. We can choose whether or not it starts locked. I'm just gonna, I'll start it unlocked. So what we can do is we can just open it and close it just like normal. Now I'm gonna press T to lock it. And now I cannot open it. So I'm pressing E, nothing's happening. I press T to unlock it. I can open it. Now the way this is currently set up is if the door is opened, and it is locked, so I just lock the door. You can close the door, but you cannot reopen it. The only way to reopen it is if you unlock it, like so. So, that is all going as intended. 
and now I've pretty much made the door that I want to use in my level. Now, this comes with a couple events and functions. So currently, I have a couple things bound, and those are simple just prints to, the, uh, prints to our screen so I can see what's going on. So we have the first event, on door finished rotating. So when the door has finished rotating, whether or not that's fully open or fully closed, so for example, it goes fully open, it'll print door closed, like so. This gets printed. So I can have this print the door state. And the door state, let me do a switch for you, is this. So we have open clockwise, open counterclockwise, closed clockwise, and closed counterclockwise. So that you can kind of cover and do specific things for whichever rotation that you want to have handled. Put this up here, just make it a little bit cleaner along with the rest. Next up, we have on door state changed. So this is whenever the door gets interacted with. So let's say I open the door, that event fires. And these events will all fire on all clients. So any client that the door is relevant with, it will fire for. And because this is controlled via onRep, so a replicated variable, these will fire whenever the door is relevant to the player. So next up we have onDoor lock state changed. So this just has our lock state enum. Whoops. So these are the two values for it. We have unlocked and locked. So based on the state of whatever it switches to, you can do specific things for that. Now this is set up to be pretty performance efficient in terms of replication. So the only thing that actually gets replicated is a simple enum. So it's just a simple uint8 that gets replicated across the network and nothing more. So that is the only thing that is getting sent across the network. As far as uh, how to use this or how to open and close the door if you're making a multiplayer game, you can see in my example character here, open up the blueprint example, and what it does is I have two functions on the character that are just very basic, and a a blueprint character, like a strictly blueprint written character, will be included in this plugin as well. I just have not made it yet, as I'm still doing some uh, small changes to the door, commenting and making it a little more readable for the end user, but what these two functions do is we can take a look at it real quick. So example character.cpp perform door toggle. So whenever we want to open and close the door, we just call perform door toggle. And what it does is we simply perform a line trace from the character's head and using our camera's rotation. And we will send that out by 500 centimeters. If that hits a, an object, we check if that object that was hit is a door. If it is, we make a call to the server, just a simple server RPC. Oh, sorry, right here. So if a client calls perform door toggle and their line trace hits a door, it will check if they are the server. If they are not, which they won't be, we call server door toggle, which is just a simple server RPC. And all this does is calls toggle door. So if you did not want to make this multiplayer, all you would have to do is simply call toggle door and it's handled for you. There's no need for any server RPCs. So if you were to do this via blueprint, for example, what you can do is you can just call some simple functions that are set public on the door class and these are exposed to blueprint. So we have toggle door that will simply open and close the door. We have get recently used player, so we can get the player that recently used it. Now this would be something for the server to call in case you wanted to run any sort of logic on that, for example, such as uh, if you want it to, I don't know, I literally don't entirely know what you would use this for, but the options there, and I'm sure I will end up adding more functionality to it to where it can be more viable, such as a basic key system. Then we have set door lock, you just pass in whether or not you want to lock or unlock the door. And we have a basic toggle door lock, which simply will 
lock and unlock the door, assuming door locking is enabled. So if we disable, for example, our door lock system, we cannot lock or unlock the door. It's just going to work as normal. Hence why start door lock is disabled. So these get controlled, well, enabled and disabled based off of what you set. So if I want to use the door lock, great, I'll check that. And I can dictate whether or not I want to start with the door locked or unlocked. So I want the door to be unlocked when I start, so I'll just leave it unchecked. I can open it, it's unlocked. Regarding animation, when you check that, this also works with our locking system. So pretty much all these will tie in together. So if you're using animations, we want to only have access to features that are using animations. So we enable our animation section and we will set it to open door away from player and disable door until fully rotated. Great, that's good to go. And if we wanted to, we could just change these up. And if we want to access open door clockwise, we just need to uncheck open door away from player. So now we can choose to open it clockwise or counterclockwise like so. And let's say we want to go back to code. We just uncheck use animation. And now our code features are back to being enabled. And as simple as that. Now, last thing, let's say we want to create a physics door. Well, I can turn this into one. So I'm using a static mesh here. I'm just going to duplicate this out like so. I'm going to check, let's say I need to uncheck use door lock, and I'm going to check make door physics based. Now currently, this won't work. It'll just, it won't have the constraint working. So what we have to do is click on our physics constraint. Constraint actor one, we just grab this little eyedropper and we can click our door. And now the constraint is set to our door. So when I walk into the door, it opens and closes via physics. And that's all that there is to that. It's as simple as that. Like I said, I'm trying to make this as simple to set up pretty much whatever possible combination that you would want for your doors. So I would like to add more to this. So if you can come up with anything or any suggestions that you have in the comments of this video, I would really like to hear them and I will think about trying to go ahead and implement them if it would benefit the end user's gameplay experience with whatever features end up getting added from your suggestion. So, yeah, that is the current state of the door plugin. So, version one. Uh, everything that you have seen here is included with the plugin. So, all these doors in the door frames, these are from Epic. So, that's just the start of content. You are expected to use your own door message, meshes or purchase meshes. And they will just pretty much, it's just plug and play. So the only thing that you need to make sure of, which if you purchase a door or something online or off a of marketplace, it's going to have its origin point at the opposite corner. So where the pivot point would be in a real life door. So that's pretty much a given. And I'm pretty sure you can now move the origin point inside of a real engine or something like that. I think so. If not, I'm, if I recall right, I think there's a plugin that actually does it for you. So, yeah, all of that is included, as well as the opening and closing animations. And this little example map here, so you can run through the settings, set them up, and tinker with it, and figure out what you like, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that is everything. Also, uh, a, blue, a strictly blueprint written character, not this uh, C++ derived character, will be included. So, that will be something else to check out. Anyways. Uh, this video has been going on for long enough, so if once this actually gets published to the marketplace, a link to it will be in the description. So I hope you're all are interested. Take care.